Welcome everybody to Lasugi. Uh, my name is Heather Campbell and I'm the Strategic Initiatives Director here at the Inuit Art Foundation. And I am originally from Rigolet, Nunatsiavut. And I was just telling people earlier that I'm moving back to Labrador next week. <laughs> so it's a bit of a crazy time, but um, I'm so happy that all of you will be able to make it today. We'll just quickly go through um, I'll begin with uh, sort of the logistics of things and then we'll move on to introductions and then John will do the sort of the body of the, of the talk today. The Inuit Art Foundation's main office is located on the ancestral and ter traditional territories of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat, the original owners and custodians of this land. Today, this place is home to many, including a diverse urban indigenous community of Inuit, First Nations, and Métis. And if we wanted to uh, get started with introductions for the rest of the uh, Inuit Art Foundation staff, maybe we can start with John. Yeah, thanks, Heather. Um, so it's nice to see everybody here today. Uh, thank you all for coming. This is the IAF's first uh, workshop geared towards artists that we've uh, worked over the number of years to support. So very happy to be launching this program. Um, stay tuned for more as, uh, as uh, we continue to develop our uh, slate of workshops. Um, so as Heather said, my name is John Locke here. I'm the Artist Services Manager here at the IAF. I've been with the organization uh, since January. I'm currently based in Peterborough, Ontario, uh, which is also known uh, as Nogajiwanong, um, the Anishinaabe name for this territory, which uh, translates to the place at the end of the rapids. I've lived and worked in Peterborough on and off for the last 16 years or so. Um, I'm originally from Toronto. I was born in Toronto in Dish With One Spoon territory. I'm very pleased to be a part of this organization. Thank you again for being here today. Hey, I'm Nepachi Folger, and I am an associate editor for the Inuit Art Foundation. I will be moderating, I guess, the question and answer period. I'm currently living in North Vancouver, uh, which is located on Squamish Nation territory, and I'm originally from Iqaluit Nunavut. Um, we're, we're trying to have everybody save their questions till the end of the presentation, but if something comes up, I will be watching the chat box throughout the whole presentation. So the, uh, the structure of the workshop is, will be um, taking about 45 to 60 minutes and we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end. And um, as Nampachi was saying, she'll be having a look at the, the chat box. So if you can use the chat function um, to ask any of your questions and she'll be able to, uh, to see that. And we'll um, answer all of the questions. Um, if we can't get to them today, then we can uh, try to get to them uh, later on. So we'll make note of them for sure. Um, so John is going to walk through the uh, content of the application, uh, including the nomination letter and the support material requirements, as well as troubleshooting any tech related questions or concerns. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to John. Okay, thanks Heather. Um, I just wanted to flag for everyone as well. Um, that uh, we are recording the workshop. Uh, so there'll be a video recording um, as well as a live transcript that's happening right now. So if anyone does need access to closed captioning, um, that function should be available for you. Um, once the workshop's completed, we're going to um, share the video recording through our website and our YouTube channel. So stay tuned for that. I'd encourage all of you to pass on that video to anyone who couldn't make it today or refer back to it if you have follow-up questions. And as Heather said, We'll take questions at the end. We'll answer hopefully all of them today, but if something comes up following the workshop, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. So some background on the award. Some of you might be familiar with the award itself, which was established in 2014. It was established to honor the life and work of the late Kanuriwak Ashevak, 
it was established initially as a biannual prize um, that was created to support the practice of an Inuk artist and specifically to support a residency program with a prize of $10,000. The first award was handed out in 2018 to Lakalu, which was a great occasion for us. The award itself uh, went to support a really fantastic residency program that Lakalu was engaged with at that time. Over the years since the first award um, was given out, the CAMA prize has undergone a significant reevaluation. And we're happy to report that in 2021, rather than um, the $10,000 prize going towards a residency, this will go to support the practice of the chosen artist at large. So the financial compensation is no longer tied to a residency program. And what's also very exciting in 2021 for us is that there's now up to $3,000 per artist for three artists on a short list. And that's uh, thanks to generous support of our donors for the camera program. And so based on that, we hope that we will be able to award up to $19,000 to um, a maximum of four artists this year. The winner and shortlist will be announced in September 2021, um, with exact dates to be announced over the summer. The award itself is open to mid-career and established Inuit artists working in visual and performance-based practices. If you have questions about the distinction of either your practice or where you're at in your practice as either a mid-career or established artist, uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch with that. I would also encourage you that if you are working with a nominator to um, speak with them about where you stand in your practice. We are accepting nominations from artists directly, as well as professional acquaintances that could include curators, gallerists, writers, critics, fellow artists, or anyone else relevant in these fields. If artists choose to self-nominate, uh, um, they would write their own nomination letter. If you choose to have someone support your nomination, they would write the nomination letter for you. All of CAMA's uh, nominations will be assessed by an external jury of uh, Inuit art professionals. The jury will remain confidential until the awards announced in September. The deadline is Friday, June 25th, 2021 at midnight Eastern. In terms of eligibility for nominees, uh, you must be an Inuk living in Canada with citizenship, permanent residency, or refugee status. You must be at least 18 years old. Academic accreditation is not a requirement in this case. Be rec recognized as a professional established artist by their peers uh, within the past two to three years and have had their work recognized in a public capacity. So either by a gallery, a publication, a website, or a collection. If you choose to work with a nominator, that nominator must have uh, known the nominated artist in a professional capacity. Um, they can be a professional currently working within a Canadian university. Uh, they can be an established artist, curator, writer, critic, or arts professional, or a private Canadian art dealer. They can also be a family member so long as you have worked together with this family member in a professional capacity. And if they are a family member, that should be clearly outlined um, in the notes of your nomination and application package. So in terms of what's required of you, we ask for a nomination letter. That letter is one page max. An artist statement, that would be 250 words max. A bio for you as the artist and a bio for the nominator, which again, 250 words max. Um, your artistic CV, which we asked to be capped at three pages. Visual some support material. Um, we asked for upwards of 15 images and or five videos. We would also ask that in that support material that you identify at least three images or video stills that we can use for promotional purposes to support uh, CAMA. And we'd also ask for the completed and signed nomination form with your support material. So I'm going to share my screen and we can talk a bit about the different ways that you can apply and things to look for when you're doing so. So this is our landing page for 
Kama. It's available both in English, in Inuktitut, in uh, Roman, and syllabic. So if you wish to navigate between the three, you would just click on these buttons here. If you choose to apply online, we'd ask that you click on the apply online button. We also have the application form, which is a PDF copy of what the application looks like online. Uh, again, available in English, uh, Roman and syllabics as well. Everything that I'm talking about today in terms of criteria for nominees and nominators, as well as what's required of you for the nomination package is all available here through our website, as well as our criteria, criteria for assessment. And if you do need to get in touch with us, both Heather um, and myself can be reached through here. So if you choose to apply through our website, which is certainly what we would encourage, but we are trying to make this as accessible as possible. So there's a number of ways you can do this. Applying online, you'll be redirected to the application page. We'd ask that you fill out all applicable forms. So if you are self-nominating, the nominator criteria does not apply to you. And so they're all fairly straightforward in terms of how you access them. You just fill in your name, your preferred pronouns. I just wanted to mention that if someone wanted to call in, we actually have someone that can um, speak to you in Inuktitut as well. Mm -hmm. Thanks for flagging that, Heather. So in, in the interest of making things accessible, as we've said, we have everything available in English, Roman, and syllabics. And if you do need to speak with us, we do have staff that are uh, available to speak with you in your preferred language. I'm not going to fill out every one of these uh, criteria because no one actually wants to watch me do that. Hopefully you get a sense of how these are filled in. It's no different that really than uh, filling out a Word document for your nomination packet. So that includes your letter, your statement bios, uh, and your CV. What we ask that you do for those is save them as a single either Word or PDF document, which you can upload here. When you click on the Upload Here button, you'll uh, have a pop-up window. You'll be able to upload your form here. And when you click submit at the bottom, it will automatically be uploaded along with uh, all other relevant material. In terms of uploading images, uh, we also have uh, everything located through our website. You're able to do that here. You would click on the upload box. It would redirect you again. I'm uploading one of Heather's great works. And then as I'd mentioned, we ask that at least three of the works that you're uh, uploading as support material be flagged as usable for promotional purposes. Um, you as an artist would still maintain copyright over the images. So you would either click yes or no here. You can upload up to 15. You can upload as few images as you like, but we would recommend taking advantage of the full amount of images uh, that you can upload. You also have the ability that if there is video work or if you work in performance, a performance-based medium, that you upload your video links. After I walk through this, I will talk about what we would uh, like to see for both video links and images and some of the protocol around there. You'd complete the application by um, signing off on both declarations for the nominee and, if applicable, the nominator, and then you would hit submit. I'm going to loop back around just to talk a little bit about what's, what's expected in terms of uploading images. I'd also just like to talk a little bit about um, how you, as a uh, nominator, would submit video content. So for your visual support material, as I said, 15 images maximum and uh, five videos maximum. When you're uploading your images, we'd like you to follow, and this, is, uh, this information is all available here online as well. We'd like you to follow naming protocols. So they should be labeled numerically. So as you see here, start with zero one, 
and then the artist's last name or full name. That'll just make it easier on our end to collate uh, these files. But please try to follow some kind of naming convention that is at the very least a version of this. In terms of video documentation, we'd ask that rather than you uploading video files, which can be uh, quite large, that your uh, video support material be uploaded to a site such as YouTube or Vimeo, and then uh, the link dropped into your application here. We'd also ask that you, uh, for each of these videos, flag, regardless of their duration, the five minutes for each video that you would like the jury to review. This helps us with the amount of time that we should expect each jury member to spend reviewing your content, and it helps us streamline the process. So if you can, in your nomination package for the information for each video, please also demarcate which section of the video you would like us to view. So that's a little bit about the nomination process through our website, but I would also like to talk a little bit about the other ways in which uh, you as an artist or an artist and nominator can apply. So we're also accepting submissions via email. So please ensure that when you are emailing us your nomination package, uh, that all documents that we've discussed here are included in that email. When you're submitting your high-res images, we'd ask that they be transferred to us through a uh, file sharing platform. So either Drive, Dropbox, or WeTransfer are all acceptable. If you are having any trouble sending large files to us, please get in touch and we can help you with that process. All three of those options that I've just mentioned are free to use as well. So certainly don't sign up for anything that would cost you any money. For your email, if you are sending via large file transfer, also please flag that in your email nomination package as well. To do a nomination over email or any of the following uh, methods that I'm talking about, you can download an application form directly from our website here. This is the PDF version of our nomination form. This is a form fillable document. So depending on what operating system you're using, you can either use Preview or Adobe to fill these out. You'll see here that I've already started to fill in some information. And so you can also, if you choose to, print these out and fill them in by hand. All of these highlighted sections are where you can punch in your information, you can save these files, so these can either be filled in on your uh, personal computer and then either print it off if you're choosing to submit via mail or fax, or you can save to your hard drive and include in your, in your nomination email. So please make sure that as you're filling these out, you're saving often because certainly don't want to lose any of the work that you've uploaded here. Now, with all that said, this will submitting via email will still function in the same way as is expected with submitting through our website in that your nomination letter, your bios, your artist statement will st still all have to be written in a separate document. So as I said, if you are submitting via email, it'll be to the CAMA email as well. So that's CAMA at InuitArtFoundation.org and we'll receive that directly. Um, if you have questions specifically about the email nomination process, please, again, let us know. The next way in which you can submit is via mail. That would be similar in respect to uh, the forms you'll be expected to fill out. So you would need to access this PDF. You would need to print it filled out either by hand or through your computer. But you would also need to print all of your support materials. So that includes your nomination letter, your CV, your bios, and your artist statement. The big difference with mail is that we would actually ask that should you be nominating via uh, regular mail that we receive your application no later than June 25th. So you would need to post it considerably earlier depending on where you are nominating from in the country. The other big difference is how you submit your visual support material. You have the option to print high quality prints of your support material 
and send them directly to us. You can also upload those images to a USB key and include them in your mailed package. If you would like the key back, please include a self-addressed stamped envelope for that. So those are your two options. Obviously, if you are submitting via mail and sending us video links, uh, the only way that we could receive that would either be if you email them to us in advance or if they're included on a USB stick. You can also submit to us through fax. That process would look very similar to the way in which you would submit via mail in that you would have to print off all relevant documents. You would be able to fax us images if you so choose. Um, you could also email or mail us separately a USB key with your visual support material. Regarding support material and specifically your visual support material, we'd encourage you to select that work mindfully, something that I forgot to mention actually through this whole process, which is important and could also be a time saver for you, is that if your support material exists in an online portfolio or through your website, you can include those links rather than uploading images through our website. Or if you're emailing us your package, you can also email us that link and clearly uh, demarcating which images we should be looking at through the website or online portfolio. If you have questions about doing that, please get in touch with us so that we can clarify that process. But that is an alternative option, especially if bandwidth is an issue for you uploading large files. But in terms of selecting your support material, we would ask that you really be mindful of how that material frames your practice as an artist. If you are someone who has a, a profile through the IAF, that that's certainly being noted in your application. Obviously, everyone's profiles also contain varying degrees of, of visual support. So it is something to consider in how you construct your application. If you are working with a nominator, I would suggest and this is where we can talk a bit more about kind of best practices for putting together a package is working with your nominator to select and share your support material because you want to ideally put forward what you would consider to be your best work, your more, most relevant work as an artist. That What that support material can look like can be a mix of um, recent and kind of foundational work. You know, it is, a, it is a very difficult process to take what could potentially be hundreds of images and break that down to a maximum of 15 of those images. So my advice to everyone is that that can often be the most arduous process of a nomination process like CAMA. So do give yourself lots of time. And I can't stress enough that if it is possible that the images are of a high enough quality that it'll be easy for jury members to view them. If that is an issue for you, again, um, the artist services team is here to support you through that. So we're happy to work with you to try and navigate how your your material can best be represented to the jury um, if you do think that's an issue. Same goes for the video content. If you are in choosing to include video content, be mindful of that five minute time limit and be sure to note the time windows that jury members should be viewing. If you are including video but are not performance-based or video-based, Take the time to consider why that video work might be relevant to you as an artist. I'm also going to speak a little bit about working with a nominator because I know that for some people, this might be the first time that someone has nominated them for anything. So I just want to ensure that people feel comfortable with that process and also comfortable knowing that they're not required to have a nominator if um, they would rather self-nominate. But I think it's important if you are working with someone who would like to nominate you, that you as an artist and they as your nominator take the time to speak with each other so that you as an artist feel that nominator is representing you and your practice in the best way possible. So they are doing justice to the work you've done and that they're not that they're representing you and and your work in a 
truthful way and in a way that feels good to you as an artist and is representative of the work that you've done in your career. I would encourage you to also ensure that um, the nominator provides you um, with that letter ahead of submitting so that you as an artist feel comfortable with what they've put forward and feel confident as an artist to go back to them with any changes that you might think are necessary or that would better capture your practice at this point in time. And so I think that if you are approaching someone to nominate you, what you should also consider in doing so is having things like your CV and your artist statement and your bio ready to turn over to them, because ideally that will help them establish a clear understanding of where you're at in your career and also how best you can present yourselves to them to create the the best nomination package possible. I'm happy in the question period to answer any questions that anyone might have specifically about the CV process, the statement, or the bio, any kind of differentiations that we might need to make between those. But I think just what we want to stress is that, that if you are working with a nominator to just ensure that both of you feel that it's a reciprocal relationship and that that individual who might be nominating you is someone who will put their best foot forward in terms of, in terms of representing your practice. I think if you choose to self-nominate, you know yourself and you know your practice, um, you'll write your own nomination letter. So you would be performing that role. You would be thinking about and speaking about the work that you've done to this point in your career. You would want to highlight significant accomplishments, both recent and in the past. It's also certainly a productive idea to talk about what's coming for you in the future. What we are less concerned with especially because, as I said, this award has moved away from a residency-based award to an award that simply supports the practice of an active uh, Inuk artist, is that you do not have to justify if you won this award, this is how this money would be spent. If there's a specific project that you are considering that this money would support, you are certainly welcome to illustrate that, but this isn't a project-based or residency-based award. So please both you as either an individual nominator who will self-nominate or as someone working with a nominator, do not feel like that needs to be part of your pitch as an artist. Beyond that, in terms of that relationship as a nominator and nominee, this is your kind of greatest task is to, in one page, convey to us the scope of your practice, where you've come from and where you are going, and to consider how that will be read by, by a group of professionals um, working in the field. And as I also said, and I just want to reiterate it because I think it's important, that no staff from the IAF will actually be making a decision on the submissions, will simply be acting as administrators in this capacity. At this point, I'll open it up for questions, and I'm happy to go back and talk about anything more in depth at this point, and I'm happy to field any questions uh, related specifically to the nuts and bolts of the uh, application itself. Uh, from Olivia, is it possible to nominate a collective of artists? Yes, so collectives are eligible as well. It would be the same amount of money split amongst the collective. So the same uh, rules would apply, Olivia, for nominating. If you're going to nominate a collective, then we would ask that you have the artist statement would apply to the collective itself. We'd ask that the bios would pertain to the individuals within the collective. The CVs, we would ask that it be a CV for the collective and the nomination letter would still be be the one page max but everything else is set up in a way that it can easily take in kind of nomination from mellow is there a time frame cut off from when the work was done so mellow do you mean like how far back you could go in your practice like that kind of cut off oh how old is too old um i think that ultimately that's a, a difficult 
question to answer. I think it will largely depend on how long you have been a practicing artist. I would say that there is nothing wrong with potentially submitting work that is 15 or 20 years old if you feel that it is a strong work of art that demonstrates the scope of your artistic abilities. If you're an artist who does multiple things, can we add all the things we do or do we need to choose only one thing? For example, visual artist, performer, filmmaker, et cetera. From no, I think, you know, and this is the reality of contemporary practices is that there are individuals who are known as multidisciplinary artists. I think that the concern is less about the support, the visual support material in that respect, and more about how you as a either self nominator or an external nominator position that as, as a kind of complete practice. Because I think for a lot of us, we know artists and individuals who are engaged in multiple practices, and that is how we imagine them. We don't, you know, compartmentalize them um, into kind of one practice or another. Um, so I think in this respect, it is useful to talk about their practice as a whole. I think it's also a way of storytelling too, because whatever your medium is, it's reflective of you know, a time period in your life and something that you were exploring at that time. So if you sort of group them that way in a way, you know, that makes sense or tells a story, that's probably a good thing to help the jury sort of see the connections between all of the mediums. If video exists online of a performance or show, but it's not your video, how is that handled? Is it acceptable to just share the link to the owner's page? Yep, so you can share the link to the owner's page. If you don't own the rights to say the still images from that video, what we would ask you to do in advance is communicate with the owner of the video, explain to them the situation, that this is being used to support a nomination for an award, if you're going to use that for promotional purposes, that they be first credited and in the acknowledgements and then also understand what it would be uh, used for. We're always here if you guys want to uh, give us a call or send an email along or even Facebook. I know I have some of you on Facebook. Our social media web pages considered uh, websites. If that is where you as an artist are primarily sharing your work, then by all means, utilize that as your web presence. We're, um, we're always here. We'd love to hear from you. We'd actually prefer that people do get in touch with us in the lead up to the uh, June 25th deadline because we are here to help. I'm going to share my screen really quickly. The question was if it's taxed or not. So this is taxable income. Um, and we'll um, be uh, providing uh, the individual with a T4 slip to the recipient of the award, as well as the, the shortlisted artists. We can certainly answer any, any more uh, elaborate tax-related questions after the fact, if that's needed. Please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. We are certainly more than happy to help with any aspect of your application, especially any uh, tech issues or troubleshooting on that front. You can reach us at CAMA, K-A-M-A, at InuitArtFoundation.org. I'd also encourage you that if you'd like to stay up to date uh, with what's happening at the IAF, that you um, sign up to our mailing list, which uh, you can do at the IAF's homepage. Heather, anything else you wanted to remind folks of? Yeah, just to sort of uh, keep an eye on the website and our social media, because we have a uh some other events coming up throughout the, the summer and fall as well. We've got a couple of talks that are happening with the uh, Smithsonian Institute in Anchorage. Hopefully we'll see you there as well. So that's it for me. Thanks everybody. I hope you have a great day and a great long weekend if it's a long weekend for you. Well, thanks for the great presentation. Thanks, Mapachi. Thanks for all your work today. Ha, ha, ha.